Go to Ephesians tonight. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to grow up. I'm not a Toys R Us kid. Huh? You remember that song? Toys R Us kid. Million things at Toys R Us that I can play with. <laughs> I'm not a Toys R Us kid. Come on now. Got a lot of Toys R Us kids in the body tonight. I'm not talking about you all, but I'm talking about, you know, there's a lot of kids in the body that don't want to line up, don't want to grow up. You can tell they get offended real easy. And we don't want to do that. And we're not trying to cause offense, but Jesus said this, be sure that offenses will come. I don't care what you say. I don't care how long you've been walking with God. I don't care how close you are to God, how close you are to the Father. He said, be sure that offenses will come to you. Doesn't mean you have to take them, but they're going to come. They somewhere, you're going to be challenged by God, especially in this house. You're going to be challenged by the word and the anointing. It's going to hit you right square in the nose. At some point, you're going to be shaken in some area that you feel insecure in, that you feel weak in, but it's never to hurt you. Listen, I get it too. Don't, don't think that I don't. I get it just like you do, man. You know what I mean? And, uh, and praise God, but I don't get offended. I just get over it, shake it off. Praise God. Get, learn. Say, Lord, I'm not there yet, but I know that I need to grow. I know I need to learn. And praise God, you're the teacher. So praise God, I'm still here. I'm still faithful. I'm still going forward. Praise God. I'm not quitting. I'm not giving up. I'm going to put my huggies on if I have to. I'm going to tighten them up, put duct tape around them if I need to, and I'm going to keep on going, right? Amen. If I can't wear underwear yet, I'm just going to put huggies on. The diaper, you know what I'm saying? Change the diaper every now and again. I'm just saying, though, I'm making a commitment here. If you're in a place that never, you know, Apostle Ron said this right here. He said, I'd rather sit on a bell of hay in a barn and have somebody challenge me with the word of God, challenge the way that I think, than I would to be in a cathedral with thousands and thousands of people and never get nothing but some fluff telling you how good you are. And you are, but in Christ... But to never be challenged, if you're never challenged in the way you think, if you're never challenged to come up, then you never grow. You stay stuck in an immature state. You stay stuck in this place of immaturity. And that's not God's will for His, for his church and His body. His, his will is, as He is, so are we. He didn't say, so am I. He said, so are we in the world. As He is, so are we. That's God's will. As he is, so are we. Man, I tell you, when we get this, you know, I, I was thinking about this, and when, when you get in the right place, let me tell you something. When you get in the right place, things are going to happen. Let, let me help you with something as your pastor. When you get in the right place and you start lining up with God, you're going to see things out of people that you never thought you'd see. You're going to see spirits rise up that you never thought was there. I'm going to tell you something. That's when you know you're in the right place, honey. That's when you know you better hold on. You better hold on with everything you are. You better keep going with everything that you have. Listen to what I'm telling you. Hey, Amen. I know exactly. I've been through every bit of it. Praise God. When you get in the right place and all hell breaks loose, you think, my God, what happened? Or you get baptized in the Holy Ghost and they say, my God, what's going on? And all hell's broke out. They Hell's throw the kitchen sink at you and you wonder what it is. Well, you're in the right place. Amen. Are y'all are y'all with me tonight? Can I preach tonight? Well, I made a commitment the other day. I'm not going to be afraid of the faces. I'm not going to be, I'm not afraid of them, but I'm saying I'm not going to be looking at people. I'm going to obey God. I'm going to be a vessel that He can use to speak through. I'm going to preach it, let it fall where it falls. Praise God. Amen. 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 Those that love you are going to love you. Those that don't ain't anyway. It doesn't matter what you do. They're going to hate you. They're going to love you. Whether you try to do this, try to do that, you try to do this, try to please everybody, you ain't going to please everybody. They're going to hate you. They're going to hate you. They're going to love you. But the ones that love you, if you'll be real, will really love you. And that's what we're looking for. That's what God's looking for, some real people. Amen. Some real people that will stand up, pick up their cross, and begin to follow Him. Amen. Begin to stand up as real men and men and women of valor that will stand up and take this word and won't, won't, won't deviate from it. I didn't say we'd be perfect, but I ain't going with nothing else. Amen. Ephesians chapter 1. We're fixing to get into some meat here tonight. Whew, see what I can get into here. Lord, help me tonight. 
This was a prayer that Paul prayed. Or well, Ephesians, Paul wrote it, but this was there's a prayer in here. But I want to get I want to start reading in chapter one, verse one. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints which are at Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Now, now I want you to get something here for just a second. I'm going to stop right there for one minute, and I want to teach you. A lot of us don't rightly divide the Word of God when we read it. Now listen, from Revelations, all, or from Genesis all the way to Revelation is the infallible Word of God. No question. Every jot, every tittle, every bit of it was wrote, written by a man huh, through the, whole, the Holy Ghost through man. God through a man wrote these scriptures which is the living Word of God. I will not take away from that. Every single word in there, God wrote that through a man. It's not just a book. It's the living word of God. But you have to rightly divide the word of truth. That's why it said rightly divide the word of truth. A workman needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. So you've got to rightly divide. You've got to look at who he was talking to. What he was talking about. Sometimes we've got doctrines in our own body. In the body of Christ. We've got doctrines that people has formed. Because they got a scripture out of context. In the old covenant. The old testament. And they've built a whole teaching and doctrine on it. That's not scriptural. Because if you rightly divide the word of God. The old covenant. The old testament is the word of God. No question. It's all a, a, a pointing to the Messiah. It's all, it's all prophecy. It's all the Israel. It's all God's people and, and, and everything. But when you come into Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, what we call the New Testament when Jesus was here on the earth, okay, that's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. But really, he was still under the old covenant. You say, why, wow, Pastor, how's that? Well, because he hadn't went to the cross yet. It wasn't until he went to the cross... Till he shed his blood, till he went into the heart of the earth, he was resurrected the third day, came out of the grave, body and all, ascended into heaven 50 days later. When he ascended, he that descended first is him the same one that ascended up on high. But he didn't enter in without anything. He entered in, it says, with his own blood. To make atonement for the sins of mankind once and for all. There would be no other sacrifice. There would be no bringing a lamb and slaying it before God every year. This was once and for all. I love that. That song keeps coming to me. Jesus paid it all. All to Him I owe. He entered in once and for all with His own blood. That's the new covenant, what we call God the Father accepted that sacrifice, accepted that blood in His Son. He accepted that and He said, now anybody that believes in Him, anybody that believes in that blood, now I'll accept them. Now I'll forgive their sin because of the price that my Son Jesus paid. Because of this price, if you can believe in Him and have faith, now I'll take that. If you can take that, then I'll wash you clean as if you'd never sinned before. I'll make you a new creature a new creation in Christ as if you had never committed a sin ever again and now I'll come to live with you and now I'll be in you praise God and now I can be that because that middle wall that separation has been torn that broken that broke down that middle wall partition now I can become one with my people one with you because of your faith in what Jesus done See, that takes the sweat off. That takes the, that takes a weight off of you because it wasn't because of me that I'm standing here. It's because of him. Pastor Jody testified. What a powerful testimony. It takes courage to stand up and tell about the old man. <clears throat> let's, let's air it out your old man and see what happened. Let, I don't even want all of it aired out. I don't even tell all of it. I don't even care about that. That man's dead and he can stay dead and in the grave. I might hit some points that the Holy Ghost 
tells me to hit, but I don't take to the plow looking back. I'm not taking looking back at that man. I don't have no connection with him. He ain't here no more. This body that he used is still here, but this even this body that he used, praise God, is still being renewed day after day. Praise God. You understand what I'm saying? I ain't taking to the plow looking back at the old man. I'm taking looking forward to the kingdom, looking to the greater day ahead, praise God. That's where you got to be looking at the greater day ahead. There's greater days ahead, praise God. So when he entered in with his own blood once and for all, you got to rightly divide the word of truth. Sometimes we read the Old Testament. We're looking in this covenant when God said, no, you got to come through the blood. You got to come into this new creation life and you got to learn how to live in this kingdom. When Jesus was on the earth, he was still under the old covenant. They were still under the old covenant. Wasn't until he ascended and, and, and put this blood on the mercy seat and God the Father said, now it's done. Jesus said it on the cross, but he, he was prophesying to, to what was fixing to happen. He said, it's finished. It's already accomplished. It's done. It's done. It's finished. You think about this. Jesus overcame the flesh. He overcame all those the people that, that turned on. He overcame death. He overcame everything. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? Jesus never submitted to the flesh even in a moment when he took on the sin of the world. You've got to understand this. When his life's blood was being poured out, when everybody turned on him and he was standing there at the cross and only John and his mother was standing there, everybody else that followed him and got all that stuff from him and received the miracles, everybody that he taught, that he loved day in and day out, that he washed their feet, they turned on him. They would not stand at the cross with him and he still stood and he still went out when never gave in to the flesh. Not one time he submitted. He submitted submitted to the flesh but he submitted his spirit unto the father he said into the hands I commend my spirit father into the hands I will not bow to this world I will not bow to the sin I will not bow to what I'm going through I will not bow to the flesh I'm going to submit my spirit in this moment to you father I'm not going to give in to the ridicule I'm not going to give in to the things I'm better than I'm going to give in to you father even in that moment, Jesus said, I submit my spirit to you, Lord. I submit, I give my spirit to you. Lost blood's being poured out. He said, I thirst. Unrecognizable, the Bible says on the cross. He was unrecognizable on the cross because he came, became sin. All the sin, all the sickness, all that in the world. The Bible says you couldn't recognize him on the cross. We get a pretty picture when you see a movie, but if you really looked at it, he was beaten beyond Paul. He was, you could not recognize him for the sin that he had taken, and it was mine and your sin. It wasn't his. He never sinned. He never committed sin. And even in that moment, when death and darkness covered the earth in that moment, said the rocks shook, said the earth shook in that moment. You know what you're saying, preacher? You're preaching the cross. That's right, because it's the power of God unto those that are being saved. The earth shook and darkness covered it. Why? Because the Son of Man, the Son of God, you think that wasn't a dark hour? You think that wasn't a dark hour for Jesus hanging on that cross? When the Father had to turn? Bible says the Father turned away and had to turn His back on. Nobody wants to hear that. They say, well, He didn't face no pain. He didn't go through none of that. Let that lie be told. Don't let that lie be told to you. He said, I thirst. He faced what, th he knew what thirst was. He knew what thirst was. He knew what it was like when he looked down and he couldn't even get the tongue of his mouth. It says in Psalms, I think 22, that their tongue, the, the tongue was stuck to the roof of the mouth because there was no water. And he said, I thirst. You think he don't know what pain was? That's why he said he's the secure. He's able to know. He's able to feel your infirmities. You understand that? That he was tempted in all points yet without sin. I'm glad that I'm filled. I'm glad 
that I'm a son. I'm so glad, brother, that I don't got to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm so glad that I don't have to bow to this world and the systems of this world. I'm glad that I don't have to bow to their mandates and their man-made rules and rituals. Praise God. I don't have to bow to those things. Why, preacher? Because I've already died. You understand? I died years ago in a prison cell and that old man stays dead because I crucify him every single day. I make sure that he stays dead. I thought about Pastor Jody when she was up here. You know, you're overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. That's how you keep it real. You've got to talk. You've got to do something. You've got to keep it real to you. You can't be real to everybody. It don't matter what everybody else thinks and said. What do you say? That's what, that's what Jesus told the disciples when he was walking with them. He said, tell me, Peter, what does people say? He said, well, he said, well, they're saying this. Some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're him. Some say you're Elijah. Some say you're this. And he said, well, okay, but who do you say that I am? Who am I to you? Thou art the Christ. Peter, flesh and blood hadn't revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven has revealed this to you. So when we look now and we say New Covenant, New Testament, we realize that there was blood shed for this covenant. There was a price paid for this covenant. Don't get mad at me, but I'm going to say a lot of us, we want to talk about free. Free. I got to say this a long time. I got all kinds of people that say this all the time. And I've said it too many times. It's free. Salvation is free. It's free. It's free. I used to say that all the time. I'm talking to me. I used to say that all the time. Trust me. And then I started studying the scripture. I started realizing, hold up. Somebody paid for this. You might be able to reap some benefits from it, but Jesus hung on a cross as his life's blood poured out. So you could have life. Because he lives, we live, but when he, he died, he took on the sin so you could be free from it. He became sin so you could be free from it. So when, you, when we say that, we got to realize there's a price that was paid. For you to be a Christian, there's going to be a price that you pay. Somebody peach, preaches this other fluffy stuff to you, they're lying to you. They have deceived you in discipleship. They have, they have deceived you for whatever purpose or reason. They have deceived you. And I'm not preaching the devil's message, but I'm telling you what. There's going to be a price to pay for this cross. There's going to be a price to pay for you carrying the cross. There's going to be a price that you're going to pay. Jesus said that. That's why he said before you set out to build, make sure you count the cost and you realize what it's going to take to finish it because when you get halfway through, you don't want to get halfway through and say, uh-oh, I don't have enough to finish and you fall, he said it was better that you never started than it was to get halfway and quit. Yes, now we're getting into something here. See, the Lord told me this the other day. I'm riding down the road and the Father said this, build my church. I said, what does that look like? You see, I don't act like I know it all. I'm like, I know the one that does. But when God speaks to you and tells you something, you better listen. He was just a correction thing as I'm going. Build my church. What does that mean, Lord? What does that look like? Ephesians starts to lay it out. Listen to me. So when we read Ephesians and we read, uh, the, the, uh, we read Acts and we read Galatians and Ephesians and now we know that this is the covenant. This is for the church, us as the body of Christ. And there was a heavy price paid for this and for you. And I like how Todd White always puts it. He said that price that Jesus paid for you determines how valuable that you are to God. The price of something... 
is determined by how much somebody is willing. Or the, no, let me say this. The value of something. Let me say that. The value of something. Let me get my words correct. The value of something is determined by what somebody is willing to pay for it. If you go to an auction and you put up something for auction, the value of that is determined by who's going to pay and what, the, what they're going to pay for that. So the value of your life to God is summed up in one word. Jesus. The value of your life in one word is Jesus. His life for yours. See, that's the gospel. Because like she said in that testimony, man, looked in everything, everywhere, try to do this, try to do that, try to offer this up, offer that up. Maybe this will feel good. Maybe that will feel good. Maybe this, will, maybe this will make me feel right. You know, maybe he will. Maybe he will. Maybe it's him. Maybe it's him. Maybe it's her. Maybe it's this. Maybe it's my kids. Maybe it's this. And Jesus says, no, it's not. That's why the woman at the well is sitting there and she's, she's like, he's like, you've had five husbands and one you've got now, it ain't even yours. But the longer he talked with her, the more that he real, she realized he, he went from being a Jew to now he's a prophet to then he was the Christ. So the longer he dialogued, the longer she talked with him, the, the perception, the, his, his, per, her perception of him changed. She perceived him different. All of a sudden, as she talked with him, she said, no, hold on, you're a prophet. How do you know all this stuff? How do you know this? You must be a prophet. Now he's getting somewhere with her. Now she can receive from him as a prophet. The way you perceive someone or something determines the ability that you'll have to receive from it. That's why Jesus asked Peter, he said, who do you say that I am? Thou art the Christ. The son of the living God. Now I can receive from the Christ, the son of the living God. And the woman at the well, the longer she, the longer she heard him, the long, look at your neighbor and say, the longer she heard him. One more time, say, the longer she heard him. the more her perception of him changed. And the more it changed, you ain't got to keep saying it, the more it changed, if you look at that dialogue and you read that, study that out, when she perceived him to be the prophet, right after that she started receiving words of wisdom, I think, or knowledge from him. The same thing that she was talking about with the wise man when they brought gifts before him and honored him, it released something from heaven into their life. And they were Chaldeans. These were, these were heathens. But that released something from a heavenly realm into their life and they started having dreams to warn them. Same thing happened with the woman at the well. First, he was just a Jew. The longer he talked with her, oh, now you're the prophet. Well, if you would have asked me, I would have given you living water. And, and, and what's, what's, what the well that's in me now would be a well in you. What's come up in me now would be coming up in you and springing up into you in everlasting life. And then it shifts again. And before the end of that the end of that text, she says, Thou art the Christ. And he calls her into the ministry right there in that moment. He says, you know, and she runs back to her town and she goes back and preaches. Preaches the Christ. He's here. This is him. Is this good? 
So now when I read the New Testament, the New Covenant, I realize I'm a new creation in Christ. You're a new creation in Christ. And now I realize the price that was paid for me to, to allow me to come into this body of Christ, to come into this new creation life and become a son of God. In, first, in John, he says this, to, to whoever would receive him, talking about Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whoever would receive him and believe, to them he would give the power, that's the right, the authority to become a son of God. The right and the authority and the privilege. It's a privilege. The day when God would accept you because of His Son Jesus. So now when I read Ephesians, now it comes to life to me because I realize this is, this is to us as a church, as the body of Christ. This is God speaking to us where we are now in the new covenant. He said in Hebrews, it's based on better promises. Better covenant, based on better promises. Them promises are still ours too. But this one's based on better promises. Why? Because we're new creations in Christ. It's as if we had never sinned. Do you realize when you get saved? Do you realize when you get born again, you stand before the throne of God right where you're at? You stand there as if you had never committed a sin or wronged nobody ever before in your life? Did you know the record books wiped clean in that moment? Your name's written down in the Lamb's book of life. Praise God, the blood's covered it all. You understand that? As if you had never committed a sin before. As if you had never hurt nobody before. And not only that, but Jesus said this, I want to go step further with you not only am I taking your sin but I'm going to take the guilt I'm going to take the shame I'm going to take the condemnation that goes with that that keeps you in a place of bondage Pray, I'm going to take all that from you and I'm going to give you a life and life more abundantly yes. said I'm going to set your feet on a rock yes. establish your goings said he became sin who knew no sin so me and you could become the righteousness of God but not only did he do that why can we stand up here and testify to that old man that's all nasty and all kinds of vulgar and stuff and testify to that with no connection to it because I have no guilt and shame for nothing he did why because he's not here honey that's been that's the old man he's dead he said old things has passed away he said behold all things have become new all things have become new to me in that moment New creations in Christ in the anointing. I'm a new creation. I'm being built up. Now we're getting into the church. He said, build my church. I'm a builder. You understand what I'm saying? I'm still building. I was building in the natural. Now I'm building in the spiritual. We're building up into a holy habitation. What? Laid on the foundation of what? The apostles and the prophets. Praise God. Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. Praise God. This holy habitation is being built up right before being built up in the spirit now when I read Ephesians no longer do I read it the way that I used to now I read it from the perspective of it's alive for one and it's the living Word of God, but this here is to the church. And I'm part of this church. I'm blood bought. I'm blood washed. I, I, didn't get, I didn't get voted into the church. You didn't put me there. Nobody put you there. Nobody voted you in, honey. I don't care what your membership you got. I don't care what you're a member of, what you ain't a member of. I, nobody voted you in. You understand? We was born into this family. We was born into this body. We was born again into this body. He said, except a man be born again, born of the water, born of the spirit, born again, he shall in no wise enter in. I was born into this kingdom I was born into this kingdom and I'm a son and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Amen. You're a joint heir with Him today. Come on. This is the good news. He said to go and preach the good news. Tell them all. Tell them the good news. Preach the good news to the poor. He said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. 
Ain't seen no righteous child of God out begging bread. What you mean? I'm anointed. What you mean? I'm a joint heir with Jesus. He said to preach the gospel to the poor. Because once you get a truth and revelation of who you are, there'll be no more poor. <laughs> there'll be no more poor. They'll be blessed. <laughs> I'm blessed. It don't matter about my bank account. Don't look at me. I even know my bank account's fat. What you mean? <laughs> From the east side. The east side of heaven. Now what? <laughs> You'd have to know. I ain't going to go into it right now. We live. <laughs> I'm from the high rises. You understand that? I come from the gutter, but now I'm in the high rises. You hear me? I'm come, I come from the gutter. I got delivered out of the gutter. I'm in the high rises now. Come on, give him a shout and a praise. Give Jesus a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! He took you, put your feet on a rock, established your goal, and said, you know what? I'm going to raise you up for such a time as this. I'm going to raise you up. I'm going to fill you with my spirit. I'm going to give you my word, give you some truth today. Set the captives free. What am I doing? I'm building this church. I'm doing what he told me to do. He said, build it. I'm building. <laughs> I'm a builder. Whew. Now when you set out and you read that context of what Jesus was talking about when he said, make sure you got enough. When you start out, make sure you got enough. Make sure you're discipled the right way. Make sure you submit to a pastor. Make sure you get into a spirit-filled church. Make sure you get there where you can be equipped, where you can get built up, where you'll have the right stuff that when you get halfway through, you won't falter and fail. You'll have enough to carry you all the way because you got the right foundation, because you got the right discipleship, because you've been, you've been developed in your character. You've been developed in your integrity. And now that's what's going to carry you all the way to the end. Your gift is not going to carry you. It's your character. It's your integrity. It's that that's going to carry that's going to carry you all the way to the end. It's who you are as a son, not what you do. You understand what I'm saying to you? Now when you get halfway because you went through the process the right way, now you get through. Now you get halfway. You get down. But you know what? There's a supply because you're connected to the right place. Now when you get through, there's a steady supply coming. Now you just get back up. You correct things. You do what you need to do. Boom, boom. Anybody hear me tonight? Have I confused anybody tonight? Huh? Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Why do I get so passionate about it? Because I love it. Because I'm anointed to do what I'm doing and I love it. I love it with everything that's within me because I believe it with everything that's within me. Because I can tell you of an old man that once was. I can tell you of an old man that once was. I can tell you of an old man. I can tell you about a man named Jesus. But he didn't just want to stop there. He wants me to come into this king. He wants me to be developed. He wants me to get under a pastor. He wants me to get under a place where I can be discipled. He wants me to go up and grow up the right way and then become a part of the body. See, God's into building a body. It's not a one-man show. It's not an island out there floating around. It's a body. Man, I tell you what, I praise God for my tribe. Hey, Matt, come on. I praise God. Come on, give him. God, hallelujah. I praise God for my tribe. And when I say that, I'm talking about my church family here, but I'm talking about my fellowship abroad. You understand? Redemption fellowship. I praise God for my tribe. Our tribe. You understand my tribe? Your tribe. Our tribe. Praise God for it. I tell you what. One day you're going to see. You stick with it and stay in. You'll see. God said if I told you everything I was going to do in your ministry. He said and in your church. He said you wouldn't believe it. So I can't even tell you yet. I said we'll stop right there. <laughs> Because I've already got vision coming out of my ears, my eyes, and everything else. And we're not there yet. But I see, I don't need more right now. Just, you know what you're doing, Father. I just submit to you. Tell me the next step. <laughs> 
Tell me the next step and I'm just going to be faithful. That's, that's, that's all. Tell me the next step. See, when you get connected to the right place, it's like plugging into that light socket right there. You start lining your life up with God. You, 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 you come with honor. You come with the right way and you submit when it don't feel good. True submissions when you don't agree. Anybody can submit when you love me. When everything's good, I'm not talking about disagreeing on sin. Sin's never even an option. I'm just talking about disagreement or whatever, the way you don't like the way you preach or this or that or, you know, offense or whatever it may be. You know what? Hey, but true submission is saying I'm going to submit anyway. I'm just going to come under the mission anyway because God's told me to be here. That's what I'm going to do and I'm going to be a part of it. I can disagree in some areas and get past it. Because once this body starts to come together, like God's calling them right now. God's calling them in here right now. They're coming. They, some of them don't even understand it. They look at me and say, well, he's only 40. He's really young. Thank you. Let me say that again. <clears throat> they look at me and they say, he's got tattoos all over him. He's really young. He's only 41. He's really young. And I am. And I'm coming into agreement with that. I'm very young. I'm vibrant. I'm, I'm full of life. Praise God. The mind of Christ. Healthier than I've ever been in my life. I'm just speaking life. I'm not boasting. I'm boasting in Christ. Understand that. I'm boasting in the Word of God. I'm not boasting in self. I'm just coming into agreement with I'm young. I'm not going to come into agreement I'm old and dying. Moses was 80 years old and still strong and vibrant as a young man. What is your confession? Do you know he wasn't even a new creation in Christ? Think about this. He wasn't even a new creation. You all are new creations in Christ. Nobody before Jesus was a new creation. That's it's a new creation. New creation. Never before existed before that moment. You never before existed before that moment that you got born again. That you got saved. New creation. Creator. Makes creation. That's why now I've got to learn to live. I've got to learn to grow up. I've got to learn to get discipled. I've got to learn to grow up into the things of God. I don't see the way I seen five years ago. I don't see right now the way I did a year ago. The last three days, me and my wife has been transformed into another person. Why do you say that? Because I was in an incubator for two hours a night for three days with apostles and prophets who are very proven and is a part of my tribe and getting poured into for two hours, three hours, actually it went three hours, some of it, three hours straight being poured into by the apostolic and the prophetic anointings. And in three days I become a different man. When I say that, I'm saying my ministry has rose to a place I've never been here before. I've got to learn it. I've got to learn I can't function the way I did three days ago. I can't function the way I did last week. I can't preach the same way I did then. I just can't do it. Now I've got to learn to flow. I've got to learn to fill out these rooms, fill out this new place that I'm in. I can't release it all, but I've been just saying, God's elevate, God's, God's, and, and, and I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. I, I, I just trust you. Let me just preach this message. <laughs> You'll get too far ahead. I just want to preach this message and be obedient. To God be the glory, you understand? What I say, and I say in humility, I'm not saying to look at me and puff myself up and all that. Christ is the only thing good about me. What do you mean? He's the only thing. We're vessels. A vessel. The greatest thing you'll ever do, brother, the greatest thing that you will ever do is give yourself Die to yourself, your own dreams, your own wants and everything. Accept what Jesus is offering you in this new creation life and the forgiveness of your sins. And then lay your life down. Pick up your cross and say, Lord, not my will, but your will. You want to find your life? That's where you find it. He said, except you die, you cannot live. Except you lay it down 
you'll never find it. And whatever you try to hold on to, whatever you try to hold on, which only be life's a vapor, I don't care if it's a hundred years, your life is... And then you realize all that stuff that you tried to hold on to, all that life that you thought you tried to hold on to, and stuff that you ran after, all that stuff, that you lose it anyway. And then you lose your life in eternity. And Jesus said, I was offering you way more than you ever tried to hold. I was offering to bring you in full partnership into my kingdom. I was offering you to be seated with me in the heavenly realm. And you sold out for some cheap imitation stuff in this world. I don't care if it's all the go. I don't care if it's all the stuff. You sold out for those things. When the creator of heaven and earth said, I'm offering you a seated position with me. I've given you the keys to this kingdom. <laughs> I've offered you the greatest thing that you could ever want in your life. The greatest thing that you could ever get. I've offered you the greatest reward that you could ever get to win Christ. I've offered you all this. And you're going to sell out for this cheap stuff and cheap imitation stuff. This mirage. It's a mirage. The devil's blinded you. And you sold out and gave it all away. When Jesus said, I was offering you life and life more abundantly all along. And you sold out for something cheap. I want to say this right here. I want to close with this. But those of you online, listen, this message just hit your heart. Listen to me. Fall down where you are. Get, right, get back right with God tonight. I made a commitment. Y'all pray for me that I'll come up here and I'll never come up here without getting in my prayer closet and coming up here on fire. Anointed by God. Never stand behind this pulpit spitting and sputtering. But I'll come up with packed full of the Word of God and the anointing of God. From this moment forward, the rest of my life. Because I've failed in a many of areas. But I'm going to tell you something. That if you're listening to this message, you've not went too far. The devil might have lied to you. People might have lied to you. But the Bible's very clear. You've not went too far. I guarantee it. If you're sitting here and you're thinking about it, you've not committed the unpardonable sin. You've got a chance to repent and to turn away from the world and to take and to receive what Jesus is being offered or what's being offered to you. Jesus said, I've come to give you life and that more abundantly. I know there was some hard preaching. I'm going to pour in some more. He said, I've come to give you the real stuff. Why are you selling out for the cheap imitation stuff? Why are you selling out for fake gold? Why are you selling out for that? Why are you selling out for new cars? You're selling out for all that. I give you all that. That ain't even a problem. That comes with the kingdom. That comes with this, you know, you understand a kingdom that comes with it. You understand? You can't be in that and all of a sudden he not provide for you. What you mean? I'm not talking about living poor under a bridge. I'm talking about seeking after the kingdom. I'm talking about Jesus said, I'm going to give you life and life more abundantly. Everything you need is found in seeking me. Everything you need is found in running and chasing me. You're chasing the things and the temporal stuff. When I already said I would provide all that for you, that's just that's 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 a snap of my finger. Ain't enough for me to transfer a million dollars from one bank account to another. I got eight bank accounts waiting on the transfer. Think I'm playing. You're gonna laugh at me. You might laugh now. They might laugh too at the bank. But I'm gonna tell you something. One day you ain't gonna be laughing. One day you ain't going to be laughing when Bill Gates gets saved and he says, you know what? I'm going to give it to that church. Here's your hundred million dollars. Boom, let me try. I need to pay tithe on all this, all this time that I've been out in the world. Let me put a hundred million dollars in your bank account. I'm going to say break that up into about four of them right now. And I'm going to take my tithe and I'm going to take an offering and match it and I'm going to give up to... Oh, I serve the king of kings and the lord of lords what you mean the king of kings and the lord of lords why are you selling out for the cheap imitation stuff why are you selling out to a devil that cannot follow through with his promises 
My God. When you realize what's for you. Mm, 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 mm. So those of you online, listen to me. I'm going to close out because I'm going to open up this altar for prayer. And I don't, I don't want it online. But where you're at, listen. Reach out to our media team if you need to, if you're watching. Whatever it is, I'm not beating you up. I'm just selling. Quit selling out to the world. Quit selling out to the devil. Quit selling out to sin. Jesus is offering you a life and a life free from that, a life more abundantly. He's offering you something, the greatest, the greatest opportunity that you could ever have in your life. If you want to receive this Jesus of Nazareth and you want to die today to your old self and be forgiven of all your sins, you can do it today with a simple repentance, a simple prayer that says, Jesus, I give you my life and I ask you to forgive me. I'm telling you, it's that simple by faith. And you start there, you get into a church, a Holy Ghost filled church, you connect with a pastor, a shepherd, a man of God, and you get in and you never quit going. You never quit going forward. Listen, I'm going to pray for you. Father, we pray for them right now in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that this spirit, the Spirit of God, I pray, Holy Ghost, that you would take this word, seal it in the hearts. I pray that you would take this message and preach it and give it to everybody that needs to hear it tonight. The gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And God, I pray that you'll raise up a people that will not fear. I pray that you'll raise up a people, as you said in your word, that will walk in the power and the demonstration that you've called and created us and anointed us to walk in. That will be people of integrity. That will be people of character. That will, not, you could, that, that, that will not falter and waver and will not commit sin with you and will not be deceptive with you. I pray, God, you're going to raise up a generation and a people right now, not only here in this church, but all the churches around. Praise God, a people that will have the character of the Father, that will have the DNA of the Father in them. I pray that right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And we tear down every principality and power, every ruler of darkness in this area. In the name of Jesus, I pull down your strongholds. I pull down your religious demons, the religious spirits that's got a hold of these churches. I pull them down right now in the name of Jesus. I pull them down. God said, quit polluting my, my, my sanctuaries. Quit polluting my sanctuaries with your football, with your drug, with your, with your alcohol, with your rock music. Quit polluting my sanctuaries says the Lord quit polluting the sanctuary with the world mm. NFL Sunday in the sanctuary I pull down that in the name of Jesus right now pollute the sanctuary of the most high God the holy place and you pollute it with the world you better repent I'm not that kind of prophet. I'm not the one that's going to fluff you. I'm going to give it to you straight from the word of God. You take do with it what you want. You keep polluting the sanctuary. God said, I'm going to remove the candlestick from you. I'm going to remove it from the midst in the name. When God removes his spirit, it's done, honey. You're going to go through a formula, but there ain't going to be no Holy Ghost. But I'm telling you now, listen, on the other side of that, let me pull down the, let me, let me get into the pull the oil down for you because let me tell you something, on the other side of repentance, we can repent and we can get back right. And God says, you know what I want to do? My will is ain't to do that. My will ain't to do that and keep you in that place. My will is to break my spirit and anointing in there greater than it's ever been. My, 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 my will is that you not look like the world, but praise God, when they come in, the world comes in. They don't want to be out in the world no more. They want something real that they and grab a hold of and I feel Jesus saying that I feel God saying that right now that's what he wants for our churches that's what he wants praise God for us hallelujah but I got a prophecy last night from my overseer and my wife was writing and it set me free 
He said, you just be used the way God uses you. It won't look like everybody else's. It don't have to. You think what you want. I'm, I'm being transparent with you. I'm growing too. I'm not there yet either. But when I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost and I can preach it in love, that's what it is. We've got a lot of polluted sanctuaries today. We've got a lot of polluted ministries and churches that need to repent. We love you. God loves you more than anything. But I'm going to tell you something. He said to repent. The word's gone out. The systems, the principalities, everything in this area has to, has to listen to this word right here. It has to obey, obey the voice of authority. You understand that? They have to obey the voice of authority who God's put in this area and in this place. Just because you're in a place don't mean God put you there. Wine sipping Sunday, Saturday, sipping saints. What you mean? Sipping saints? Bet not. Bet not. And you're going to tell somebody? What you mean? We're a bunch of ex-drug addicts. You're going to tell me I can sip and take a dip? You tell some of them to take a dip, take a sip, and they're going to be drunk in an Irish pub and we're going to have to go get them out. Because they can't take a dip in a sip. Because a sip going to put them over into the ocean. Next week I'm going to be robbing your bank and your store. And your house. Better hear me. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. When I answered the call to preach, I didn't answer the call to, to I answered the call to preach. Not to fluff you up, make you feel good, try to get your money. We better get back to a place we better start caring about the soul. The truth will set you free. Listen, I don't know why I said that. I'm just saying, I'm just flowing here. But it's out of love, it ain't to condemn. Jesus said, I didn't come to condemn the world. <clears throat> I come that the world through me would be saved. God's will is for you to be saved. God's will is for us to be a holy and a peculiar people. A people that He can raise up and that He can blow His Spirit into. And it just ain't new creation life. There's churches all over, man, that's real churches. And God's wanting to do something in and through us and all of us together and everything that He's wanting to accomplish He's wanting to, that's God's will and His will will be accomplished. So I want to say this to my sipping saints. Stop sipping on the old alky. Oh, I sure thought about that. Mm-mm-mm. So Father, I pray that those listening will not take offense, but we'll, we'll, we'll judge. And, and we would all judge ourselves and judge our own lives. And realize that eternity is forever. And like you said, life is but a vapor. And your life is no more. And they're going to be at your funeral and they're going to be crying and doing all that stuff if, if we're lucky. And it'll be all good and it'll be on Facebook, whatever, Tombstone. They'll put up a thing for you if you didn't have no insurance or whatever it may be. Two weeks down the road, a month down the road, you're longer, no longer, you're forgotten. Somebody, mama might remember you or somebody close to you might talk about you every now and again. But you're gone. That's why today's the day of salvation, church. Today's the day that we have a chance to be all God has created us to be. We've got a chance every day of our lives to make a difference. 
We've got a chance every day of our life. Let me get into some of the vision here. We've got a chance every day of our lives, everywhere that we go, wherever you're assigned to, whether it be on the job site, whether it be at the at the pharmacy, whether it be at the corporate office, whether it be wherever in the neighborhood that you're at, you have a chance to snatch them out of the fire. When you get out tomorrow, I want you to be so charged and anointed that everywhere you go that you're, you're, you're like this and you're ready that's what church service is for, to anoint us and to sharpen us and to get us ready. When we go out tomorrow into the field, we're looking for those that we can snatch out of the fire and give them the truth and pull them out before it's too late. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. God, I thank you for this message. I pray that nobody takes offense, but people judge themselves and know that what I said was by the Holy Ghost and was in love today. But when God's been showing me that and showing me that, and He would not, I mean, I sat in there and He was just pouring into me about polluting the sanctuaries. I'm just a messenger. That's all. But we better get back to a place where God reigns. Amen. And I'm going to close with it online with that. And if you get us a song, I want to close with that in Jesus' name. And I'm going to have to take a nap after this, ain't I? Mm. Hallelujah. Stand with me tonight, church. Sifra bashate robo so. Sifra bade bo korebeshe. Sifra basa. Come on, set your hearts here tonight.